Russian army has attempted to launch another attack on the country's Kursk region, where the Ukrainian troops launched incursion around three months ago. Russian soldiers advancing with armored personnel carriers were forced to retreat after facing serious resistance from Ukrainian fighters. The Ukrainian fighters, who were positioned in the forest strip, targeted Russians with various weapons and kamikaze drones. As a result, the Russian soldiers, who lost manpower and equipment, retreated. One of the armored vehicles of the retreating Russians was abandoned on the battlefield. Ukraine's defense forces assume that the Russian army, with the support of North Korean troops, will launch an offensive in the Kursk region within the next few days. The New York Times reports this with reference to the words of the deputy commander of Ukraine's 61st Mechanized Brigade, Lieutenant Colonel Artem Kolodkevich. According to the publication, Kolodkevich, who fought in the Kursk sector, said that his commanders had warned him that an assault might be imminent. We were warned of an attack in the near future, probably in the coming days, the Ukrainian lieutenant colonel said. At the same time as the publication writes, Russia has deployed about 50,000 troops in the Kursk region, while Ukraine has about 30,000 soldiers. According to experts, an additional 10,000 North Korean troops could allow Russia to gain the upper hand over Ukrainian forces. What usefulness North Korean troops will bring to the battlefield remains to be seen, experts say. Viktor Kevliuk of the Center for Defense Strategies says coordinating their actions with Russian troops will be difficult because they do not speak the same language, have different training and are unfamiliar with the terrain where they will be fighting. Former German ambassador to Washington Wolfgang Ischinger agrees with this opinion, emphasizing that this could become a huge headache for the Russian army, which is not accustomed to having large foreign units under its command. Thus, Viktor Kevliuk from the Center for Defense Strategies believes that North Korean troops will be used in attacks on Ukrainian positions in accordance with Russia's long-standing strategy to realize numerical superiority in personnel with artillery support. North Korean units will storm the most fortified positions of the Ukrainian and Russian regular troops will strengthen the captured objects and lines. At the same time, former British military attaché in Moscow and Kyiv, John Foreman, believes that the North Koreans will remain on the defensive and strengthen the front line, leaving some Russian soldiers free for offensive operations. If they are used for direct attacks, he added, the reliability of North Korean forces will be questioned by the Russians and their use could endanger Russian forces. The Ukrainian army has also issued a Ukrainian-Korean phrasebook for its troops to reach out to North Korean soldiers and urge them to surrender, according to a Ukrainian officer who spoke anonymously. Recently, Russian invaders have increasingly besieged populated areas of Ukraine with indirect fire. The fact is that the occupiers do not manage to capture villages and cities in the traditional way. The focus of the Russian army's new tactics is concentrated around specific settlements in the Donetsk region, emphasizing the ruthless nature of their approach. The complexity and devastation of the Russian army's new tactics highlight the brutal realities faced by the populations in the conflict-affected regions of Ukraine. Despite the ongoing challenges, the defense forces in Ukraine are steadfast in defending captured territories and countering the aggressive advances of the Russian army. 
Recently, Janne Hesselmann, deputy head of Estonian intelligence, said that October will be one of the bloodiest months of the war for the Russians. The scout drew attention to the fact that the Russian army does not stop its advance along the entire front line, but local successes of the enemy are possible only against the background of constant massive shelling and so-called meat assaults. Yannick Kesselman voiced the assumption that in October, the losses of the Russian invaders could again be insane, and this month it seems as one of the largest in terms of losses for Russia. According to our estimates, the enemy will lose about 40,000 servicemen, both wounded and killed, within a month, he stressed. As the Estonian intelligence officer noted, the main focus of the Russian army is concentrated around the settlements of Zeleny and Korokov in the Pokrovsky direction in Donetsk region. According to Kesselman's data, more and more often the Russian occupiers began to resort to tactics in which they do not directly enter populated areas. The main reason is that it requires more complex training and self-organization from them. Therefore, they besiege settlements with indirect fire. After the settlement is surrounded, they simply destroy it. A very cynical and disgusting thing, explained the scout. According to him, the Russian army has moved forward in the area of Chasiv Yar and is trying to storm even more actively the positions of the armed forces of Ukraine in the Lyman direction. Certain Russian units are increasingly refusing to advance in the Zaporizhia region, with such instances becoming more frequent, according to the telegram channel of the partisan movement Atesh. According to agents from the partisan movement Atesh, certain squads from the 1,440th Motorized Rifle Regiment are refusing to advance in the Zaporizhia region. Those who refused have been detained by military police. Everyone understands that assaulting the Ukrainian defenses is a one-way street. Such cases are becoming more frequent. The message states, The Atesh movement noted that in light of the situation, the Russian command is planning to deploy new units to the specified direction and replace the formations that have retreated with conscripts. This is happening against the backdrop of assurances from military political leadership that conscript soldiers would not participate in the special military operation. The Partisans report. Recently, several Western media outlets reported that Russian forces allegedly planned a major offensive aimed at capturing Zaporizhia. The Russian forces have intensified their strikes on the city using guided aerial bombs. Meanwhile, the Deep State Service of Ukraine noted that Russian forces have taken control of the village of Levadny, located near the border of Zaporizhia and Donetsk regions. The Ukrainian armed forces confirmed the enemy's success in that area. The head of the Zaporizhia Regional Military Administration, Ivan Fedorov, warned that the Zaporizhia region may not have electricity in the winter. He urged to prepare for the worst-case scenario. Ukraine is building second and third defense lines around Zaporizhia region, according to regional governor Ivan Fedorov. In his interview for a national TV, he revealed that the military completed construction of the first line of fortifications in mid-summer. The governor stressed the effort can help turn Zaporizhia into a fortress, adding that the defense lines are being given constant upgrades that will include not only structures that protect from guided bombs and artillery, but also anti-drone protective elements like nets. Construction on the second defense line nears completion, while the third line of defense should be operational within weeks. The military rolled up their sleeves to finish work to meet the deadlines set by Ukraine's general staff.